Hello there. Today we're going to laser engrave this logo into plexiglass. But first of all, we're going to set up LaserCut 6.1 and cut out a piece of plexiglass to the size of one of our side doors. And to do this, we just draw a square and then highlight it bring up a dialog box and resize it to the exact size that we require to cut out for our door. So the next thing to do is to select the cut mode and to fill in this dialog box, I've actually pre-filled this in at 18 millimeters per second. 75% uh, strike of the arc or strike of the laser. And then 75% um, in corners, then run in the laser along the straight 70%. So I've just saved that to a flash drive and just plug it into the side of the laser and uh, laser just automatically uploads it into his memory. So we have our plexiglass set up in the laser now. It's on little standoffs there and uh, this is the piece of material that we put underneath the nozzle and um, this auto the Z height then uh, automatically comes up and uh, registers the um, correct height for the laser. Now this is an interesting process because plexiglass is see-through and the laser, the laser pointer even doesn't register actually on the plexiglass. I put a piece of paper right up to the edge and what I'm actually doing here is I am putting the laser pointer exactly three millimeters or eighth of an inch from the end of the plexiglass. So I get an absolute square cut. And the white sheet of paper actually shows up the laser pointer there. So now I'm just registering the orientation of the material and saying that's where the start of the program is. And I'm just testing to see whether the material does actually lie inside that area. Now, a couple of things to note here. Now, this is beam drag. If you notice, where the laser enters the top layer of the plexiglass, but where it exits at the bottom, you can see there's a, an angled lag of cut. This is called beam drag. So if you, if you ever hear me talk about beam drag, that's what it is. Uh, it's the point of which the laser sort of heats the material up from the top to the bottom and the bl the blowing of the air, or the air blow actually evacuating the uh, material. And it's just the time lag um, with of the process of the laser heating the material all the way through. It's, it's not a problem at all, uh, providing you get your your speed and feeds right. And that's uh, something that you'll you'll learn from using a laser. Now, coming back the opposite direction, I, I don't actually know why this occurs, but I will find out. The beam drag isn't as much. So whether at this point in the, the, the laser's operation, the beam is slightly stronger, I don't know at the moment. Like I say, I will find out. There is a slight amount of beam drag, but not as much as it right up the back there. And you can see that that isn't smoke, by the way. That is, um, that's the plexiglass turned to a gas. It's not actually smoke. And there you are. Perfect cut. 
Now this is the starting process of actually making a logo uh, that I use anyway. So what I do is I, I draw a box to the, the area of where I have to work with. And uh, this is a, a little um, CNC mill representation that I drew up in Microsoft Paint, actually. Not a bad little program, and it's all free. What I'm doing now, actually, is I'm, I'm going to resize the work area that I have to work in. I decide, ah, oh, maybe that's a little bit too large. So I'm just resizing the work area box there. And uh, I think I make it 100 by 100 millimeters. That's 4 inches by 4 inches. And then I'm going to put some text in. Now, I separate the text words, Pacific Tulip. Uh, because I'm going to treat them slightly different, and I, I like to manipulate them. Uh, in this case, I'm going to manipulate them um, separately and just manually size them. Um, so it looks pleasing to the eye. And uh, I find this a better way to, to do it. It gives you much more freedom, I find, to uh, manipulate individual items within... A work area and you get a better result so I'm right I'm pleased with that so now I'm selecting everything and then reversing it because I find that when you're etching something if you like plexiglass if you do it on the reverse side you you get a, a better representation looking from the clear side. So now I'm setting up the engraving. I'm just indicating here that um, the settings that work for plexiglass about the right penetration. But uh, that's something that you can uh, ex experiment with yourself. And then just save it to a flash drive. Uh, just abbreviate everything. So now we set up exactly where we want the logo on our plexiglass side door. And um, with lasers, you know, you can, you can be fairly exact. You know, within sort of half a millimeter, you can do it with just with a rule. You can get very, very accurate with the laser. So just testing to see whether it lies within the area that we need it and just set the laser going. So I speeded up the film here, otherwise th this actually takes about, about five minutes to actually, you know, do this cut in real time. But you don't want to sit there for five minutes watching the laser going back and forth. Uh, it's a much better experience, I find, to uh, to speed it up because you can see things, you know, sort of happening in, in a reasonable time frame. And you can see there that all the white smoky stuff. That's just the residue, sorry, residue, and uh, that will just wash off with normally normal water. So here I am putting the door in. This is actually the front door of the uh, mini mill I recently uh, completed, actually. The CNC conversion and building of this uh, unit to put it in. So I don't get coolant all over the floor. And just uh, simple stainless steel hinges and nuts and bolts there. And that's looking from the reverse side. Uh, through from one of the side windows. So I just tighten up the lock nuts on the, the back side there and there it is. Uh, but uh, I take out a shim and I find oh, the door is catching there slightly. So 
I have to do something about that. So I get a file and just file off a couple of the offending areas and it's perfect. So there it is, the finished job. You can get, I mean this is just a simple job, but you can get some really really nice effective jobs. This next clip I've put in because I only just discovered it uh, yesterday actually and um, just take careful note of what happens to the camera when I start filming now. I'm t the camera's two meters away from where I am and how in the hell did that happen? It's, a, it's an SLR camera and uh, there's no way it can move but this type of thing is increasingly happening in my workshop that things move um, actually to a better angle the camera doesn't have that capability so if someone would like to leave a comment and explain what's going on that'd be nice anyway I hope it's been informative for you today and uh, Please come back and see me uh, or video, visit my channel and uh, have a look at some of my other videos. Uh, so until then, bye for now.